Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem. And in today's top stories, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vows to erect a security fence around Israel that would protect the Jewish state from predatory animals. Another Hamas tunnel collapses in the Gaza Strip, reportedly killing a member of the Islamist organization. The advance by President Bashar Assad's forces in the north of Syria cause a momentum change that raise concerns among opposition group supporters. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed during a tour of a new section of Israel's security fence with neighboring Jordan to protect the Jewish state of predatory animals. <laughs> תהיה גדר כזאת שמקיפה את כולה. תגידו לי, זה מה שאתם רוצים לעשות, להגן על, ה, על הווילה? התשובה היא כן. מה, אנחנו נקיף את כל מדינת ישראל בגדר, במכשול? התשובה היא כן, חד משמעית. בסביבה שבה אנחנו גרים, אנחנו צריכים להגן על עצמנו, מפני חיות הטרם. Jordan and Israel closely coordinate security for their 240-kilometer-long border, but the instability in the region raised concerns among Israel's government that Islamic jihadi fighters or African migrants might try to infiltrate the Jewish state via Jordan. The Egyptian Sinai border was fenced off with a 5-meter-high razor wire barrier in 2013, a security fence that runs from the Palestinian Gaza Strip to the southern Red Sea resort city of Eilat, a fence that has successfully barred out an influx of illegal migrants and asylum seekers in the past three years. In June of 2015, Netanyahu's security cabinet gave the green light for a new 30-kilometer stretch of fence that will run northward from Eilat along a now often porous, the Jordanian border. Prime Minister Netanyahu also said the new fence would help protect an Israeli airport due to open next year at Timna, located some 19 kilometers from the southern city of Eilat, and which has been billed as a wartime alternative should Tel Aviv's Ben Gurion International Airport come under rocket attacks. The Jewish state has already built high-tech fences in the north of the country, on the Lebanon border and along the Golan Heights with Syria. Much of the West Bank is also divided by a network of fences, barriers and walls, while the Gaza Strip is closed off behind high fences and walls. Now to the Gaza Strip, where the Majid News Agency, which is affiliated with the Islamist Hamas organization that controls the Palestinian enclave, the Gaza Strip, reported that Marwan Barhum, a 27-year-old member of Hamas's Izal Din al-Qassam brigades, was killed yesterday when a tunnel collapsed on him in the southern district of the Gaza Strip, Khan Yunis. Barhum is the 11th person to be killed in the collapse of at least five tunnels in the past three weeks. Several Hamas tunnels in the Gaza Strip have collapsed in the past few weeks, just last week, three people were killed when a Hamas tunnel in the Gaza Strip reportedly collapsed. Hamas refused either to confirm or deny the report. Now with regard to the ongoing conflict in Israel's northern neighbor, the military operation around the embattled northern Syrian city of Aleppo will not last long, Syria's government said, as its military, together with Russian aerial strikes and Iranian and Lebanese Hezbollah fighters, have launched a major offensive in the countryside around Aleppo, which has been divided between government and rebel control for years. President Bashar Assad's gains mark one of the most significant momentum shifts in the five-year-old civil war that has thus far killed more than a quarter of a million people and has brought about the worst refugee crisis since World War II, with some 11 million people forced to leave their homes. The 
The key factor to the Syrian military's success has been Russia's aerial backing that has pushed back any opposition force's ability to withstand the advance of Assad's troops. Just in the past week, Russia announced it has carried out some 510 sorties, conducting almost 2,000 strikes. In response to the recent gains by Syria and Russia, Turkish Prime Minister Ahmed Avutoglu, who is on an official visit to the Netherlands, accused Assad and his allies of carrying out a deliberate policy of ethnic cleansing around the northern Syrian city of Aleppo. At the news briefing in The Hague with his Dutch counterpart, Davutoglu said the 60,000 Syrian people had fled the violence to the Turkish border and that while Turkey would not close its borders, the priority was to provide the people with aid within Syrian territory. Tabii mültecileri hepimiz kabul edeceğiz. Ama bu saldırıların bir diğer amacı da Suriye'de bir etnik temizlik yapmaktır. Rejim yanlısı olmayan bütün Suriyelilerin Suriye'den çıkarılması için çok bilinçli bir etnik kıyım yürümektedir etnik temizlik. A commander of a Turkmen contingent within the Levant Front rebel group, which is part of the Free Syrian Army, said his men faced attacks on three fronts in Aleppo, with Islamic State to the east, Syrian government forces with Russian backing to the south, and Kurdish forces to the west. The rebel commander noted, however, that the routes into the rebel-held areas of the city were still open and that the opposition forces intended to fight back. <laughs> أولا الحلب تفرق عن المنطقة هاي المنطقة ها الشمالية تم حصرها في ثلاث جبهات إن كان بيدية من هين داعش من هين نظام وروسيا وتحالفه من طرف الجنوبي يعني المنطقة تحاصرت أما حلب ما زال الطريق مفتوح منطقة أوسع وإن شاء الله يعني جميع الفصائل سوف يعني يعني تعمل غرفة عمليات و the United States envoy to the coalition against Islamic State accused Russia's aerial campaign against Aleppo and Syrian opposition forces of forcing the U.S.-backed opposition troops to fight against President Bashar Assad's forces rather than focus on assisting the U.S.-led coalition in fighting the Islamic State. Syria, uh, Mr. Chairman, you, you really you hit something on the head because what is happening uh, with the Russian airstrikes is that they're primarily focused on uh, the opposition. And what is happening with opposition forces we were working with to fight ISIL. And if you look on this map, just the north of Aleppo, you can see the extent of ISIL's western advance. We were working with local opposition forces to move east to fight ISIL. And that was a very sophisticated endeavor, but as the Russian airstrike campaign has begun, particularly north of Aleppo, those fighters are now peeled off that line to go fight uh, the regime advance. And this is causing us real problems for the counter-ISIL campaign. And frankly, we tell the Russians this very clearly. You say you're fighting ISIL, but what you're doing is actually having a detrimental effect to the fight against ISIL. And this remains a very serious concern. With all the significant changes in recent days in Syria, the United States, together with its allies, are still adamant to restart a peace process that would bring about a ceasefire in the war-torn country. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry landed in Munich ahead of an annual security conference last night, where talks on the matter are expected to be the focus of the summit. Thank you for watching us. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. 
First, press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.